Hello everyone and welcome to another video. An important part of roller coaster design is to make sure that the g-forces that the riders experience stay reasonable and don't result in injuries. At least that's what you should do if you want to make realistic and popular rides. But if you've been watching this channel for a while you know that we don't do that here. We want to discover the very edge of what is possible. So today I ask the question what are the highest g-forces you can achieve in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. To get started let's get a baseline from this looping coaster. It goes down a 25 meter drop and then does a vertical loop followed by a small hill and at the end a medium unbanked turn. The bottom of the drop produces about 3 positive G's but it gets its highest positive G's at the top of the loop at about 5.5. On the hill after it, it experiences minus 1.7 negative g-forces and the final turn produces roughly 2.2 lateral g's. These are among the higher end of what you would usually want for good roller coasters, but for us it's just the starting point. G-forces are directly proportional to speed. The faster the train speeds through an element, the higher forces it produces. So let's build a giga coaster as tall as we can and put a small unbanked turn and a bunny hop at the bottom of the drop. After going down 127 meters the train has reached a speed of almost 200 km per hour and definitely severely injures the guests on it. This speed gives us a maximum of 6.6 .6 positive G's, minus 5.1 negative G's and 8.5 lateral G's. That is not exactly what we call pleasant, but we've only just gotten started. If we raise the land we can build the giga coaster all the way to the height limit of the game. Using its ridiculously fast boosters we can also speed it up to over 200 km per hour before it even reaches the 184 meter tall drop. This time it reaches a speed of nearly 300 km per hour, more than 1.5 times as fast as the previous ride. As a result the g-forces are also about 1.5 times as high and we have now entered deadly territory. This is the best we can do with the giga coaster, but there are other, slower coasters that can achieve higher g-forces. This is the vertical drop coaster and it is one of the few coaster types with access to a small level to steep track piece. This piece produces much higher g-forces than the normal transition so even without boosters and a smaller drop it can do very well. In addition it has access to the vertical loop which as we saw at the start produces a lot of positive vertical g-forces. Despite the lack of boosters, the vertical drop coaster still reaches an impressive 226 km per hour before it crushes your spine and expels your lungs through your nostrils on the vertical loop followed by the bunny hops. And with these elements it absolutely blows the 9 and minus 8.1 vertical G's of the giga coaster out of the water with a massive 16.2 positive and minus 9.3 negative G's respectively. You may think that we could also beat the 11.95 lateral G's of the giga coaster by using the tiny turns that some coasters get but unfortunately that doesn't work. Even if we use cheats to build a wild mouse all the way to the height limit of the game it doesn't even reach 10 lateral G's. Pathetic. There is a way to go higher though and that is with the twister coaster which gets access to the launched lift hill. With this incredible track piece you can gain height and speed at the same time making it ideal for reaching ferociously fast velocities. All we have to do is go up with the launched lift hill and then go down with a steep drop and repeat. We're using steep drops because the game is a bit glitchy and they somehow give slightly more speed than a vertical drop. To reach the point where it loses the same amount of speed through friction as it gains through boosters and the drop we need quite a few hills. Because the support limit of the twister coaster isn't that high we can only reach drops of 163 meters after we have raised the land to its limit instead of the giga coasters 184 meters. This is still plenty to get us some real nasty g-forces though. 
after just one drop it already reaches a speed of 250 km per hour and quickly after that we pass the 300 km per hour mark. Eventually we settle for a top speed of 365 km per hour which is even faster than Usain Bolt can run. And of course at the end of the final drop there are a small unbanked turn, a vertical loop and two bunny hops. This really doesn't look healthy and the g-forces reflect that. The 365 km per hour through a vertical loop produces a massive life ending 25.26 positive vertical g's and the other two aren't too shabby either. Despite the lack of a small level to steep track piece, it manages to get higher negative G's than the vertical drop with minus 10.08 and it absolutely shatters its lateral G's with 14.67. As impressive as these forces are, and they are impressive, we can still do better. So far we've been testing all these rides without guests, as you usually do, but with guests the train will go even faster and on this coaster that difference is very significant. If we make the train wait for a full load before setting off it can reach a top speed of over 400 km per hour. These result in slightly higher g-forces across the board. The final forces are 27.04 positive g's, minus 10.58 negative g's and 15.71 lateral g's. These are the absolute highest you can go for the positive and lateral g's, but there is a way to get even higher negative vertical g's. Introducing the air powered vertical coaster and its top section which transitions from vertical to horizontal using just one single tile. This ride has no support limit so we can easily build a station very high up, make it drop down, put a spike at the bottom and then connect it back to the station. With a launch of 180 km per hour it reaches a speed of over 250 when it's on the little spike at the bottom. After we have scraped your remains from the moon we can see that this gave us a maximum of minus 10.92 negative g's just edging out the minus 10.58 of the twister coaster. With that we have reached the highest g forces possible, well that is if we play by the rules. As one last category I want to see what we can achieve if we use all the cheats we want. So, this twister coaster first has a bunch of hills identical to the previous one. The difference is at the end, where it has been merged with a wild mouse for some tiny turns and an air powered vertical coaster for the negative G spike. And of course it also has a few vertical loops. This is all combined with an 11 car train launched at 922 km per hour. Lastly I used a console command to give the train the highest possible weight, which actually has the biggest influence of all. Because it is so incredibly heavy it loses speed incredibly slowly so it just keeps going faster and faster and faster. At the end of the track it has reached a speed of over 1000 km per hour but we are not done yet as this thing does 20 laps not just one. Eventually it reaches a top speed of over 1500 km per hour which is faster than the speed of sound. So what g-forces does this monstrosity produce? 61.67 positive g's minus 71.09 negative g's and 54.14 lateral g's. Yeah everyone within a 10 km radius is pretty much pulverized to dust here. There is something weird going on though, if I increase the number of laps to 22 the maximum G's somehow go down to 57, 67 and 45 respectively. At this speed the game cannot register G-forces properly so they are highly inconsistent. Therefore it is possible that you could reach even higher G-forces, but I leave that as an exercise for the viewer. If you want to see me mess about in Rollercoaster Tycoon and other games live, check out my Twitch channel where I stream every Sunday and Wednesday at 8pm CET. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.